Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, I'm sitting here to make a video for how to use OBS or Open Broadcaster software to record videos in iRacing. Uh, decided to make this video because I, I'm on Facebook a lot, uh, more than any 30 year old man should be, but that's beside the point. Uh, I'll go on Facebook and I, a lot of my friends are from iRacing and they'll post videos of their latest race um, some pass that they made or some wreck they avoided, some video of them doing burnouts or whatever, celebrating their latest win. But they'll do it with their cell phone and they'll put their cell phone in front of the monitor and they'll record the video and it's contrast is all messed up. You can barely tell what's going on. You can't really hear anything. So it just looks very white trashy, honestly. And so I'll leave a sarcastic comment and say, hey, you should really learn how to capture that and it will look a lot better. And then I'll get the response of A, I don't know how to do it, or B, I've used Fraps and Fraps bogs down my system. It's choppy and it, it takes up a whole lot of hard drive space. Well, I use open broadcast software for Twitch. I stream a lot of my races live on Twitch uh, and here on YouTube sometimes. But open broadcast software also works very, very well for recording video and you can edit it later in a video editing program or it saves automatically to FLV format, which is what uh, YouTube uses anyway. So everything's already encoded. It's already uh, reduced in size. Uh, Fraps for a 30 second video is like a gig, if I remember correctly. Um, you can get a lot more out of open broadcaster software. Um, I, I know 30 seconds will probably be 10 megabytes, maybe. Um, and that's 720p. Now it's not going to be uncompressed like uh, Fraps is, but you're not going to be able to upload that to YouTube without it. You're not going to be able to race to YouTube without it taking you know four days to upload on most internet connections. And plus, you're probably going to use up an entire terabyte worth of a computer if you're going to do that. So I use Open Broadcaster software even if I'm just recording. So we'll go ahead and open up Open Broadcaster software. Now we're going to go through the basic settings here. Um, oh, as you can see, it's very, very basic program, and this is where a lot of people have problems, is because there's not really a walkthrough. It's this is what you get. This is the screen that you get. So what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and set everything up before we actually worry about eye racing. Um, you don't have to worry about the general tab unless you want to mess with some more stuff. You can create different profiles that'll change all of these settings. Um, we'll click under encoding here. Um, right here it says 5,000. That's what I use for recording. You can go higher if you want to. Um, I think 5,000, the higher bit rate you have, the more fluid your video is going to be. Um, if you're trying to record at 60 frames a second, you probably want to go higher. Um, but 5,000 for iRacing is pretty good because iRacing uses a lot of um, motion. It's a racing simulator. so. Uh, anytime you crash or anything like that, if you have like a 2000 or 1000 bit rate, it's going to be very pixelated and it's going to take away from the quality of your video. So 5000 is about what I use um, for recording. Now, I'll go into broadcast settings. Don't have to worry about up here because we're not worrying about broadcasting. This is strictly for um, recording. So you go under file path here. Um, you can choose whatever file path you want. Um, make sure you leave the slash FLV at the end. Um, my C drive is a solid state drive. I don't like recording videos to that. So I'm going to record to my E drive. Um, I was recording to the races folder. And it'll create the folder for if it's not already there. I recorded my E drive. I got a three terabyte for my E drive. That's where I, I store all of my, you know, I moved my, my documents folder there. So I store all my races. Uh, replays, paint schemes, whatnot. There, any other game that I play besides iRacing racing is all on that drive because I don't care how fast other games run. I'm strictly an iRacing racing guy. Anyways, so you can do that. Um, you don't really have to change the buffer path unless you really want to. You can move that to whatever folder you want to, or leave it there. I've never had any issues with it. Um, you can leave the buffer lanes alone. Uh, we'll go ahead and pause those changes. We go to the video tab here. Um, you can record monitor one. Now, I I have an Ifinity setup, a triple screen setup. Now, if you're going to be recording from triple screen, it, it gets a little bit more in depth. I might, if I get enough requests for it, I'll do a video for that. But for the most part, we're going to be capturing our monitor here. 
So if you click monitor, that'll just record it the or it will be at the resolution that your monitor is at. I'm at 1080p here. I'm going to want to downscale that to 720. Um, if you try to record 1080p video, it's going to use a lot more CPU power and it's going to give you a pretty significant frame rate hit in iRacing. Uh, from, from what I've seen, 720p is very doable and will barely give you a uh, performance hit while you're recording. Um, so I'll leave that there, leave the filter by linear. I'll apply those changes. Um, you can go in here if you use something other than your default speakers for iRacing. Like let's say you have uh, USB headphones that you don't normally use unless you're racing. You've got speakers hooked up to your computer um, for normal web browsing or any other thing that you do. But when you want to play iRacing, you don't want to disturb your wife or kids or whatever. Put some headphones on. You can go down there and select that. Um, but I use my headphones all the time, so that's my default device. So for the most part, you're going to leave it to default unless you have something different. Same thing with a microphone. Um, now in here, under hotkeys, you can set up hotkeys for anything. Since we're doing strictly recording here, I set my recording to Control F1 to start the recording, Control F2 to stop the recording. Choose whatever you want, whatever's easiest for you. Um, under advanced, we're going to want to make sure that we are under the very fast X264 preset and uh, I use a keyframe interval of two here and all these settings should be what's in default anyways um, I think keyframe interval might be slightly different but from this is what uh, I use for twitch and it works great for um, recording as well so all these you can mess around with any of these other tabs if you want to I don't really use them since I always have my microphone recording I uh, really don't even know what the hell QuickSync encoder is. I'm not I'm not an expert on all this. I'm just giving a very basic run through of all this. And scene switcher. You can if you want to get really advanced with all your stuff, you can add different scenes and you know, I have when I stream to Twitch I have different scenes where, you know, there's a standby, like my stream is starting soon or whatever. This is all way beyond the scope of what we're doing here, but OBS is a pretty powerful tool, so if you ever get adventurous you can go browse through all these other tabs so let's get down to what we're really trying to do here we're really trying to record our iRacing so it's already got a default scene built in here we'll go ahead and rename this to iRacing so we just right click click rename type in iRacing and we're going to add a game capture this is what you want to use whenever you're capturing any game a lot of people just capture their monitor I've gotten better performance out of a game capture because it's strictly just worried about the game and not worried what's running in the background of the game so we'll go ahead and name this iRacing and press enter and it'll give you this window here um, it'll say application obviously we're going to be under iRacing simulator um, I could capture Chrome if I wanted to. I got PaintShop Pro open, a couple of other things. But um, for this purpose of this video, we're going to do iRacing here. So we'll click OK. All right, now I'm going to click Preview Stream. Um, we've got a bike screen here. That's because iRacing is minimized. Now, for the purpose of this, I had iRacing already loaded up. Um, because if I didn't have it loaded up, it wouldn't have given us the select the, the option to choose iRacing up there. So I have it already loaded up here under a test session. Uh, just got some regular test session at Texas loaded up. So we'll bring the screen up, we'll alt tab out, and it, this is the last frame that it captured before alt tabbed out. So that lets you know that it is actually capturing, or it is going to capture um, to your iRacing. Sorry, I had a brain fart there. Now, to see if that actually works, you click preview stream and I'll, like I said, back to the black screen because I stopped the preview. But you click on iRacing, tab out, and since we're in the preview mode, this is the last frame that it captured. And we'll go ahead and click stop preview so we know that because we know that it works now. And we'll go ahead and test out the recording feature. So we'll load up into iRacing here and go ahead and click test. And uh, we used we used Control F1 to start recording. So I press Control F1, and we'll go ahead 
and run a lap here. Don't judge my driving at all. Uh, just trying to make a video. So run a lap here. I'm going to crash on purpose. Just so we'll, we'll get a good view of that too. So we'll show how it can record replays and your in-car. Let's go for a pretty cool crash here. See what we can do. Nah, it wasn't the best, but it'll do. All right, so there's our running and crashing, and we'll go ahead and go to TV one here, and here comes the epic crash, and there's me on my side. All right, Michael McDowell in this bitch. All right, we'll press Control F two. That'll stop the recording. Um, you can go ahead and quit out if you want to, or alt tab out, doesn't really matter. And so we'll go back to that folder. Um, we're going to E drive, races, and we're going to, I'm going to sort this by date. That'll give us the most recent, and this is 4 9 2015, that's today's date. This is the most recent one that I had. That'll be the video that we were just under. So this is the video of the session I just ran. As you can see, uh, looks great. It's recorded in 1080p. Um, you don't really have much of a quality loss at all. And you can go through and record the whole session there. I went to TV1. And the wreck and all that. And this is the video we just recorded. So obviously all of it's going to be on there. But the kicker is that was only a 46 megabyte file and that was over a minute worth of driving so that would have been two gigs this is only 46 megabytes 720p and like I said it's a little bit of a quality difference you can mess around with the quality settings uh, in OBS uh, you can go to um, under you can add uh, bit rate which will give you better quality and also under video, actually not video, advanced, there's this, you know, you can change over to faster, fast, medium, slow. Like I said, those are really going to kill your CPU and kill the frame rate of your game, bog your CPU down, cause skipping, cause lagging. Um, I'll just keep it at very fast. Gets the point across. So that's pretty much in a nutshell of how to do recording. There are also a lot more advanced features that you can do. Um, I click preview stream go ahead and all right let's get an in-car view here and so I got that up there and you can do a bunch of other little neat features if you right click and add you can add images text um, if you want to add a video capture device like a webcam like I am up here where you can see me I've got OBS running on a separate computer recording all this right now but um, you can add a webcam. Um, let's do a basic thing here, like adding an image. Um, I've got a little graphics folder here, and like here's my Twitch logo that I use for my Twitch feed. And you can add that on there and click Edit Scene. You can move this around, place it wherever you want to. I can place it up here in the top right corner. Um, so you got that there. You can add text. A little basic thing here. You can add, type in whatever text you want, or you can generate text from a file. Um, so you can add that there. You know, add all kinds of cool little things. And so as soon as you go back in here, you can Control F1 to start recording, and then Control F2 to stop recording. And go back into our races folder here. And this is the video. Actually, that video didn't record. Oh, the video didn't record because I'm in preview mode. You can't record while I'm preview, obviously. So, we'll stop the preview. Try that again. <laughs> Control F1 to start the recording. I'll just sit there for a second. Control F2 to stop recording. And there's our file right there.
and as you can see in the video it added my little texting text thing here and my logo here so you can add a bunch of little neat things there you want to add a watermark and make a little customizable video or whatever the simple little things you can do there I'll post a link in uh, the, the description to a video that I found very helpful uh, by Matt Malone um, and he goes through very detailed on how to add stuff like uh, a standings bar on the side a relative feature on the side your fuel loading your there's a g-forces app um, all kinds of neat little things that you can add it's, it's an over an hour long video um, just how to add stupid crap to I mean it, it it's for street for uh, streaming and twitch but you can also use it for recording videos obviously you're going to skip over some of the stuff like the the twitch chat and all that but you can add some other pretty cool features to your recording so you don't even have to use any recording software because obs is a pretty powerful tool that'll do all that stuff on the fly but like i said this is a very basic overview of how to record your videos in OBS for our racing so hopefully in the future I don't see any crappy cell phone videos of someone's race on Facebook and I won't have to be an asshole to anybody anymore so thanks for watching guys and uh, if y'all have any other questions just feel free to post in the comments down there or message me on Facebook thanks